Got my tools, lunch is eaten, I'm ready to start work. Well, got about two hours to uh, start stripping the old girl down. But at the moment, she runs. Bye bye, carby motor. I really need to help you, don't I? <laughs> Just uh, go inside and push the oh. gearbox. Oh, that's a good leak down, down there. The gearbox. Uh, I think. Is... Okay. Sweet. Good job. And she is, the 308, all out. What a nice hole that's left. And a good oil leak as well, just for the last time. So, as you can see behind me here, we've got a big gaping hole where the uh, 308 used to be inside the VH. Just pulled it out, do it up a little bit further, there it is. Um, yeah, we unbolted it all last week and then today had a bit of time, so we ripped her out. So now the plan is to sell that to make up some space and then we can start getting some more conversion bits for the LS and go from there. So another thing I've had to do is remove the lights and the front grille just so I can get to some cleaning up the engine bay, get to some of the rust spots. I've just started grinding off just all the little... Uh, screw holes and stuff that have been there and ones that have been added over the years and stuff that's just starting to rust away I wanted to remove the battery tray to make like a nice clean uh, clean engine bay and I'll move the battery to the back so I had to drill out yeah like 10 spot welds that took forever and then I even noticed there's some rust up the top underneath the headlight so I had to uh, grind that away a fair bit more sanding and stuff to go but uh, yeah, next step, probably degrees the rest of the engine bay and start sanding the rest of it. Work has a slowed on the VH, but, uh, I have, but I haven't been filming much because it's all the boring parts and no one really wants to see all prep work and stuff like that anyway, so I haven't been filming too much. What we do need to do is I've removed the K-frame and also all the headlights and bumpers and stuff so that we can uh, eventually respray the engine bay. Uh, I want to get rid of some of the uh, screw holes and stuff, so I'm going to bog them up. So I've just been sort of grinding back paint, ready to do that, and do a bit of bogging. The other thing we're going to do is stitch well the chassis. So where all the factory, uh, factory metal overlaps each other, apparently it flexes a little bit under stress and load, like on a racetrack. So we're going to get the MIG welder out, clean it up, and then uh, just stitch weld every inch along those, and that should hopefully strengthen it up a bit. So yeah, that's the aim for today, so we'll see how far we get. Luke doing some stitch welding for us. Fires all around. Uncle Luke has uh, finished doing the stitch welding for us, which was very nice of him. As you can see, it's going along, all the major points. Not the best welds, welds in the world, but uh, sometimes that's all you can get when the material's so thin. It just burns and doesn't have a good contact, but yeah, there's spots there all the way along. So it's definitely added a little bit of strength, which is what we want, and we should be able to grind those down a little bit flatter. So yeah, one step closer to painting.
Swapping over from the uh, VHK frame onto the VR one. We have swapping the control arms on. Got some nice Nolthane bushes, which are pretty handy. And yeah, then we'll bolt that in pretty soon. Alright, we've got a, what is it, VRK frame with the VN steering rack all attached. And we painted up our control arms from the VH, so that should be good to go in the car right now. Cash from the sale of the 308 plus gearbox plus a few other bits meant that it was finally time to order the conversion kit. Through the magic of editing, it came really fast. So we've got the conversion kit from CAE. So all the good bits we have. So we've got some conversion headers, master headers, hopefully they fit really good. Conversion engine mounts, uh, some end collectors for the uh, headers. We've got the gearbox cross member to suit the T56. The gaskets for the headers, yep. We still, oh, oh. okay, it's not everything in here. Matt, we still owe you a starter motor for the left hand kit. We will send one once available. Thanks Craig at CAE Performance. Alright, here we go. So, still need the uh, yeah, adapter plate for the, the starter motor left hand side oh, conversion. That's the bit we need. That kind of sucks. <laughs> the adapter plate, yeah, it sort of blanks off one side and then the uh, starter motor sits in there. Which is... Yeah. Yep. That's all brand new and super heavy as they always are. So that's all really perfect to go in there. Off you go. And then it just gives you a bit more clearance, I think, with the headers because they're so tight. Shiny headers. Apparently these ones fit better oh, as yeah. well. Custom scratched already from factory. Always yeah. good. Preserve that. Oh, geez. That's why I kind of didn't want to take the bubble wrap off. So the inch and three quarter? Uh, yes. Okay. Matt, by the time yeah. we get them in... <laughs> yeah, there's a few more left on it. Oh, yeah. Um, so engine mounts, which yeah. we do already have. And I upgraded to, they call them power mounts, which is just pretty much nolothane rather than regular rubber here. Yep. Just a little bit sturdier for racing. Another oh, gearbox sits mount. On, sits on top. Okay. Sits yeah. on top of the cross member. Yep. Yeah, hopefully it all folds up together on the engine and away we go. So that's sort of next to do on the list.